Hey guys, John here. For this module, I'm going to be going over how to start IVs. IVs are used in hospitals, on fire rescue trucks, and other medical facilities where medical staff need to administer fluids and or medications to patients. So before you start your IV, you should gather all your supplies that you need to do so. And the first thing you're going to need are your gloves, or your PPE. For this demonstration, I'll not be using these because this is for demonstration purposes only. The next thing you're going to want to grab is a tourniquet. Then you're going to need your IV catheters. You'll also need alcohol prep pads. And you'll also need a Venaguard. IV flush solution. Your drip set. Fluid bag. And a J-loop. So after you've done your gloves, you're going to apply your tourniquet to the patient's arm, usually. I usually put about the bicep, and you're going to check the arm for veins. And you want to make sure the veins are round and flexible, they're not hard, and you want to check to see if there's any valves in there, because if you run into a valve with your needle, then things won't go very well for starting the IV. So once you have this applied, you're looking for your veins, you find your vein. The next thing you want to do is take your alcohol prep pad and say the vein is here. You want to take your alcohol prep pad and just go in a circular motion and clean it off. Now if you take it off and it's black, as that happens a lot with patients, flip the pad over and clean it again. And if that still comes up black, grab another one and keep cleaning until it comes up fairly clean because you don't want to start an IV on somebody with dirty skin. Uh, Oh, and another thing you need are gauze pads. These are a godsend because sometimes these IVs get messy. So once you do that, you want to take your catheter or IV. They come in many different sizes. You have a 24 gauge catheter. These are mostly used for pediatrics. Then you can go to the bigger size of 20 gauge. This is what a lot of clinics use because they're easy to start and they pretty much do the job for what they need. Then you have a 22 gauge, which is slightly bigger, which is still used a lot, especially in hospitals. And then you get to the big boys, which is the 18 gauge. These are used when a lot of fluid or very thick medication is needed. And then you have the bad boy 14 gauge. This is usually used when somebody's dying or they're real pain in the butt. I'm starting them on those. So you're going to take your IV catheter. I'm going to use we'll use a 22 gauge. Now you're dealing with sharps, so you want to make sure you, you don't poke yourself, especially with a dirty needle. So my lovely wife was able to borrow this little guy from her work. This is what they use to train to start IVs with new people. So with gloved hands, you're going to take the cap off the IV catheter, and you never recap an IV with two hands. You take it and you scoop it up and recap it that way. So you'll decap the catheter. And if you look closely, there is a bevel in there. I don't know, this camera kind of stinks. There's a bevel in there. So you want the bevel pointing up and you're gonna find your vein. It's cleaned off, you have your tourniquet on. And about a 45 degree angle, you're gonna puncture the skin and you're gonna feel a pop once you get into the vein. Now at this time, you should, this is gonna be hard to do. you should see a flash inside your flash chamber here. I'm trying to get this so you guys can see it on the camera. If anything, I'll show you later. But I have a flash in here. It's blue. It should be red with blood. Once you get that, you'll advance the catheter forward into the vein. You're going to grab your little gauze pad, put it underneath here because sometimes they bleed. And you're going to push firmly down on the vein, because this will help the blood from coming out. And you're going to remove the catheter. Now, at this time, instead of flushing this with fluid and ruining it, my wife gets fired for ruining training stuff, I'm going to borrow an arm from her. My arm, please. And conveniently, there's already a catheter taped to her arm for demonstration purposes. So... Normally on rescue trucks, you use these Venaguards. She will not allow me to use these because these really hurt 
to take off. So we're going to use a hospital vena guard. They're kind of more friendly. So while holding your catheter still, you're going to take a J loop and you're going to affix it to this guy just like this. Give it a nice little tug. Don't over tighten it because when you got to change out these lines and the madman tightens these things down, they're a pain to loosen. You're going to take your IV flush, pop this guy open. Oh, and another thing. Don't ever touch the tip of this because that's supposed to be sterile. So screw that in, make it nice and snug. So you're going to take your flush solution, get a little squirt, make sure it's good. You're going to wipe the end of this with alcohol. You're going to squeeze this guy on here. Wipe this whole time you're still holding this. And you're just going to give a little pull. You should get blood, but we're not because I'm not that mean to my wife. And then you're going to give it a nice little flush and make sure that it flows nice and clear and you don't get any bulges here, that would indicate that you blew your vein. Once everything's all nice and dandy, remove your flush, take your vena guard. I like to make things pretty. And you're just going to place it right over the twist top of your J-loop. Nice and pretty. And sometimes, or usually, they come with these little sticky strips where you can still tape the j loop to the patient. Now, if you're not going to administer any medications or flush any fluid yet, you have your little slide lock here, you're going to close that, because if you don't, blood will back up through the IV and all and through the j loop, and if it stays there for a while, it's going to clot, and when a nurse has to administer medication, she's going to be really mad that she has to restart an IV, because that's what's clotted up. So, that's pretty much starting an IV in a nutshell. Thank you, honey. And you guys have a good evening.